Welcome to the Transformative Principal Podcast, where we learn how to be an amazing educational leader. I am your host, Jethro Jones. Are you ready to be a transformative principal? I'm looking for about 10 people who are ready to do what it takes to lead with integrity, find balance, and take your school to the next level. If you're looking to improve your leadership in a measurable way, go to transformativeprincipal.org slash mastermind to see if you qualify to join a group of like-minded people who are ready to be the best principals in the country. This is part two of my interview with Scott Beebe, and we're going to talk about the standard core values and help you figure out the top 10 things that describe you well. You're going to really enjoy this. And this was a great interview and I learned a lot myself. With summer coming up, we principals have a unique opportunity to get a lot of work done with no students and few teachers. If you want to learn a goal setting program that makes your goals come to life, go to transformativeprincipal.org and sign up for the email newsletter and get my goal setting framework that helps me accomplish a lot in a little bit of time. Well, and it's not just that sitting down doing the work is an important part. And I I appreciate how you said the, the leader needs to be the one to do that. I agree that that needs to be something that the leader really focuses on because ultimately it is their vision that's going to that's right. carry the day. And you've got to recognize that you need to work within your district parameters and all that kind of stuff. But there's definitely some power to that. Let's talk about values now as the as the third piece of this trifecta. Okay. Talk about values. Yeah. So uh, the easiest metaphor that I could put this in. So let's go back to Kodiak. And you've given us detail of our destination. That's our vision story. We've said that uh, our mission is uh, we want to invest knowledge in the lives of kids. That's what gets us out of bed in the morning. That's what excites us. It fits our vision story. The core values, there are two different types of core values, what I call standard core values, respect, responsibility, integrity, honesty. Listen, That is the lowest barrier of entry for the game of life. If you're breathing, you need to have those. And so those are not unique, though. I want to know what makes your school unique, because we should all be playing under the values of integrity, responsibility, honesty, et cetera. But what makes you unique are things that are different from that. So you go back to your vision story with all those keywords, and you go back to your mission statement, And now you take all those words, you distill those down into what I have people do is is take them down to your top 10 words that that you feel like describe you well. So out of all the keywords that you've highlighted, you take those down to the top 10. And then out of that, you want to drill those down to about five or six. And then from there, you want to see if you can consolidate those even more down to three, four or five. And so by the time you're done with it, you could come up with some unique core terms. Trying to think of one recently we did. Well, let me go back to the law firm. They had one called knowing someone. And you think, well, I mean, that's, it, it is kind of unique, but what does it mean? Which is okay with a core value to be able to ask the question. You want people to be able to ask you that question. What does it mean? It gives you an opportunity to be able to explain. Well, for them, this particular attorney grew up uh, in a town that was socioeconomically very different from both the race and the socioeconomic status that his family was from. His father was a doctor. And they decided to move to a different setup where he grew up. Well, he's very different than a lot of the people that he grew up with. But when he rides back on the streets of this town he grew up in, which is the same town that he's practicing law in, none of us as his friend know these these people that he sees on the street. But he knows everyone. And so he kept saying, we want to be a firm that gives back to the community, give back to the community. Well, that's so cliche, right? It's so general. But when we, he started telling us stories about these people he knows that he sees on the side of the street, I went, wait a second. One of the things you value is that you know someone. Like you know someone at a deeper level than I quote with air quotes, know someone. And so they ended up uh, identifying that as one of their core values. So here's how it played out. Because they run every decision through the filtration system of core values. Uh, what happens is they get requests all the time for donations from schools and from people in the community, et cetera. And so what they've decided to do now is when somebody uh, requests a donation, they run it through their core values. And in this case, somebody requested a donation the week after we came up with these. And uh, the other attorney brought in the check and said, we've decided to write them a check. And I said, did you run them through your core values? And they said, yeah, but let us tell you about them. It was a uh, one of their employees' daughter's softball team. And they said, you know, we wouldn't normally give to softball teams, but we realized we know this person. Like we know him really, really well. 
And so they decided to go ahead and write a check because it fit their core value of knowing someone. So here's what core values are. They are the curbs on the side of the road that you're taking to get to your destination. They're what keep you on the road. So you don't become all things to all people. You become who you are to the people that you're there to serve because they need that from you. They don't need everything. They need the few things that you have to offer. That's your narrow brilliance. And then your values become the filtration for all decision making. Do you want to hire that teacher? I don't know. Run them through your core values. Do they fit? Do you want to do that fundraiser? Run them through your core values. Do you want to begin to look through another, uh, look for another principal job? Run that decision through your core values. And so you run every decision through your core values and you begin to embed that into the culture of your school. Now you're, now all of a sudden your staff is running decision through those core values. You can't help but get to your destination if that's the case, because those are the curbs along the road. You won't jump the curb uh, if you're moving along the road and ultimately you'll get to your destination. Well, and I really like that metaphor because sometimes you could drive up on the curb and you could jump it. And what you realize if we need to get the 4,000 miles to Kodiak, then we can't jump up on the curb all the time. And if there's something in our way, then we need to wait for that because we could destroy our vehicle trying to get there. And, you know, that since we did drive up here when we moved up here, that becomes a very real metaphor that it was very important to take care of our car because we didn't want to be broken down in the middle of Canada <laughs> or, or Alaska. And uh, and that really does mean something. So when you don't have these core values, that makes it really, it makes everything, like you said, a whim. And one of the core values that people in education often say is, well, we do what's best for kids. And that is that is a good core value, but it gets... I think used and abused in a lot of different ways that we say it's best for kids and that's how we justify something, but we don't really believe that. Or there's an ulterior motive that it's best for kids because it's best for me and I need to be happy to take care of the kids. Can you help me process through that? It's what's best for kids core value and help me, you know, redefine that in a way that feels more genuine. Yeah, absolutely. And Talk I about putting you on the spot. <laughs> No, no, no. It's, it's good because at, at the end of the day, you're the one with the answer. I just ask questions and, uh, and try to get you to that point. But if, if what's best for kids is a core value for you, I think that the, the next logical question to ask is because what's best for kids is so general. It can be a very, very broad thing. And by the way, it's not a bad core value in and of itself because it is a kid focused thing. But the, the ultimate question for you, Jethro, is where are you trying to go with that core value? What's what's the if it's what's best for kids? Why do you care what's best for kids? Well, that is a good question. And I I think for me, the answer is and I'm seeing now where this is the third step and I really need to have my vision story and my mission statement in place before I can really answer this question, because I haven't if I haven't articulated my core my vision story and my mission statement, then this doesn't really relate to anything. So I think I know what my, my vision story is and I do what's best for kids because they are the reason that we're here and they are our future. And we want them to be capable, responsible members of society when they grow up that are having fulfilling lives. That's what we want to have happen. So when we do things for them, then we're leading to that end goal. So I, I immediately think about this phraseology when you explain it that way. And this is this is why it's important to get the leader talking about it because keywords begin to come out. And so immediately when you say what's best for kids and then you start talking it out, my mind goes to this core value and that is the future child. And so what this child that you have now, there is a future version of this child when that child's 18 or 37 or whatever. And so one of the things you value is not necessarily the pain that exists today, but what you value is what you're going to do today and how that plays itself out in this child when they're 10, 18, 27 years down the road. And so one of the things I could totally see a school valuing is the future child, because the investment we're going to place today is going to have a return X number of years from now. And even that mindset of investment, is a strong core value because that's different than teaching. 
you know, teaching is just basically taking, I need to be very careful, I'm not speaking out of turn here and misdefining this, but essentially when I think of the word teaching, I think of the transference of knowledge from one person to the next, regardless of what impact it has on the future. But for you, what you're saying is, no, we want to, teaching is the mechanism, but what we really care about is the future child. And that's what we really value. That will then dictate what we teach, what we kind of put into the mechanism at that point. And so I like your value of what's best for kids, drilling that down even more with what you've talked about. I could see you having a value, something like uh, the future child or something like that, that, that talks about this kid down the road. Yeah. So one of the things that we've done recently is started focusing on um, trauma informed uh, practices for our teachers and training them in that. And the reason that we decided that was because we are not just interested in transferring knowledge. We believe that we live in a time where you don't, you don't necessarily need a teacher to transfer knowledge. There's so much stuff out there. I mean, you need a teacher, you need someone to transfer that knowledge, but the, the need for a teacher to just do that is not as great because of technology. And so people can listen to this podcast and I think get a master's level education in how to be a principal by listening to all the people I've interviewed. It takes more than that to become a principal. And so for our kids, we want to, we start doing this trauma and foreign practices because we believe that what what we can do at the school is to help them overcome the challenges that they're facing in their life so that when they are adults, they're not involved in things that cause trauma to their kids. And that's how we change the generations. And that's how we, we help them. And we, we recognize that kids are dealing with a lot more than what is happening at school. And so it is important for us to be able to do the things that they need in the moment without it being a big blip on the radar that we're turning you into a person who can function successfully in society despite whatever challenges you have we're teaching you resilience and grit and those kinds of things and so that that's a decision that we made recently that really does line up with my vision story uh, my mission statement and my core values that i haven't done a very good job of articulating yet yeah but it's still guiding me even though i haven't quite articulated it Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think you've, you've talked it out very well. I think, you know, from here, it's just a matter of implementation. It's taking that foundational document that you've already started from a vision story standpoint and beginning to, to distill that down. Really what you're doing, Jethro, with the mission and the values is you're making it a bite sizable. <laughs> I don't even think that's a phrase standalone, yeah, but exactly. that, I mean, that's fundamentally what you're doing is you're, you're making it in such a place where, where other people can get their, can get their mouths around it and, uh, and actually do something with it. So it's replicable at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for listening. I learn a ton from doing this podcast and I know you do too. If you'd like to support me in this, you can become a patron through Patreon. And that would mean the world to me. You can support me for as little as a dollar a month, but anyone who supports me for $5 a month or more will get the Transformative Principal Members Only feed, which releases the interviews as I record them rather than on a weekly schedule. If you've binge listened to any of the past episodes of this podcast, this is for you. And I know you're going to love it. So you're going to learn as quickly as I learn. And I thank you for supporting me. To become a patron, just go to transformativeprinciple.org. And on the right-hand side, there will be a little button that says become a patron. You can click on that and support me. Thank you so much for your support. So part of what makes it replicable is having some systems in place to to deal with what all the other stuff that's going on. Can you talk about how the the systems relate and some ideas for how to do systems in education? Yeah, I I think just in short, every organization is made up of foundational systems. So every school is made up of of systems. You may not have them articulated again, uh, but in you know in this case, for instance, administration teaching is going to be a or instruction will be a system. Administration will be a system. Logistics is likely going to be a system of sorts. And so let's say you took those three systems. Well, each system is going to be made up of tens, hundreds, thousands of little processes. Well, if you want the school to run uh, to where the, it frees the leader up to be the leader and not the technician in the day-to-day mix, then you've got to be able to identify those systems. And fundamentally, you just kind of look at the, 
look at the school like you'd look at a human body and say, hey, what are the main drivers of this school in big chunks, say three, four or five big chunks? And then from there, you can start to create a bullet pointed map around what are the major processes that make up each system. So take, for instance, administration. Well, you've got, obviously, you've got school accounting, uh, you've got your payables, receivables, payroll, et cetera, all that's in there. Well, you bullet point everything out. And then when you do that, it begins to function as a roadmap of sorts for you so that you know how to lead. And you begin to look at your roadmap on a regular basis so that you can lead according to the roadmap so that you're not missing anything as that leadership progresses. So systems have got to be a priority. Uh, but in order for them to be a priority after the vision, mission, values is complete, they've got to be articulated in those three, four, five big buckets and then distilled down to the processes that are there. So it all goes together because once you've got your system in place and you've got your processes in place, any new process that's built runs through the filtration system of the vision, mission, values. But your systems and your process, not but, but and, your systems and your processes are the engine driving the vehicle, which is your mission, along the road, which is the values that are the curves along the side of the road to the ultimate destination. And that's your vision story. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm as you're talking, I'm trying to think about what how this is playing out in my school currently. And this is, you know, why I do this podcast and why I talk to people so that I can help make my school better. And I hope that those who are listening are doing the same thing. And obviously I have a ton of questions. And my first one is it seems overwhelming, Scott, to have to do all of this and be able to get it done and run a school. How do we find the time and take the time and really force ourselves to take the time to do this? Because I know it's important, but there's also all this other stuff that's happening in my school right now. Yeah. What do I do? Well, there's one of two options. Number one is you can either garner up your self-discipline, set aside a locked time per week, say an hour per week. And you create an initial roadmap for everything you've got to do. I know I've got to do my vision, my mission, my value set. And then I've got to begin building the systems and processes. And then the final thing you've got to do is you've got to have a hub for communication for all that. So for me and for the, the businesses I coach and for the organizations I coach, it's the weekly meeting. And people roll their eyes. They hate weekly meetings. But the reason they hate them is because, you know, 95% of them don't work. They're horrible. And so we create meetings that work. And they are the hub for communication for all of these elements, these vision, mission, value systems and processes. And so that's the first way is you can either, you know, like I said, garner up your self-discipline and go get it done yourself with the key ingredient being implementation. I will tell you the reason that most organizations do not have this in place is because most, most organizational leaders have not done that. And so it's hard. It's very, very hard. The second option is you bring somebody in to walk you through the process. You know, Jethro, I know you've talked about having mastermind group, somebody who's going to hold you accountable on a regular basis to ask you where are you at in this? You know, there's a lot of mastermind groups that do not have homework. They're just kind of open mastermind groups. Those are good. They're fine. There's, they have their place. But when it comes to building something specific, you really need somebody kind of, you know, coaching you through this process of doing this. And part of coaching, I would even argue that the main part of coaching is not the idea generation. You don't need the ideas. Remember, I just asked you about the core value and I told you the answer's in you. It's just I, all I'm doing is asking the questions and then pushing you to a conclusion. And really having that outside of you is going to push you to that sort of conclusion. So a mastermind like you have, uh, I've got group coaching groups where I literally for six months walk organizational leaders through this step by step. So that by the time they start, uh, they have nothing. By the time they're done, they have, you know, say 60% of this stuff in place with the remaining 40% things that they can lead their team to do anyway, which we want them to do. We don't want them to have a hundred percent because they won't do any of it at that point. Right. Right. So that's the second way is to have somebody coaching you through that, which is the preferred way because it's going to save you a ton of time uh, at the end of the day. And, you have an outside perspective looking in. Yeah. And, you know, for for me, doing the, the mastermind has definitely helped me find some of those extra things. So I for those of you who are still on the fence about that, this is one of the things that we walk through as a part of that mastermind. And it's going to be better now because of Scott's advice. <laughs> so thank you, Scott. Yeah. The other thing that you mentioned is just setting aside the time to do that. And one of the things that that I definitely value is taking care of yourself and making sure, you know, when you asked about the family, the question, uh, like, where do you see your family in, in three to five years? Right. That was 
a really important thing for me to think about because if my family is important to me and I want my teacher's families to be important to them, then we need to focus on that and make that part of what we're doing. And our families have to be important because our families are our kids also at school. And so, you know, if, if a teacher has a kid at my school, I want that teacher to also be home with their kid being a parent and not just being the teacher in the school. And that is, that's just something that we can't forget about. And anyway, I just, I just appreciate you, appreciate you saying that. So the final question that I ask everybody is what is one thing that principals can do this week to get started on this path and to be a transformative principal? You know, I would say, um, block off about an hour of time to work on your vision. So let me give you two. Actually, that's one is go ahead and get your calendars out and block off an hour of time to begin writing out your vision story and don't overcomplicate it. Don't, don't overthink it. Just ask those kind of key questions or key categories of what does X look like in X number of years and just start answering the questions. And remember, you can start it with IC. So that, that would be the first bit of homework. The second bit of homework would be, and it's kind of in two parts, decide, do you really want to do this? And if you do, things will necessarily change. You know, if, if I take a fist and I decide to move my fist at a high rate of speed through a stable wall, something's going to change. Either the wall's going to move or my hand's going to break. And so necessarily by those two things joining together, something's going to happen. If you decide that you want to do something, something will change and it will change pretty dramatically. So the second part of the homework is answering the question, do I want something to change? And part B of that is, how am I going to go about doing that? Am I either going to do it myself, which you can, or am I going to basically bring somebody over me to coach, to push, to inspire, to, you know, to motivate, to hold me accountable, to tell me, no, that's a bad idea. And to be honest with me, and uh, and if that's the case, man, Jethro, I want to plug your mastermind. I, I, I've never been in your mastermind, but I'll tell you this: just the mastermind principle alone is worth it. And as a principal, you are on an island. You cannot talk to your superintendent about everything. You cannot talk to your assistant principals about absolutely everything. But in a mastermind, you feel the freedom to talk about absolutely everything and get complete third party input. Uh, on that decision. So if you've not done that yet, uh, you you really do need to do something like that. Yeah, cool. I second that completely. It's definitely made a very positive impact in my life. Scott, thank you so much for being here today. How can people get a hold of you and learn more from and about you? Yeah, the fastest way. Thanks for asking, Jethro. If you just go to mybusinessonpurpose.com, it's my business on purpose. Dot com And uh, we've got a lot of resources there. We've got the Business on Purpose podcast where we interview business owners and organizational leaders about how they live, uh, how they live out their business on purpose. So I'm very intentional about that, integrating faith and work, et cetera. And then you can also go, you go back to the family thing. We've actually created, it's kind of a side product for us, but we've created a product that will actually walk you through how to create a family vision, mission, and values. So this is a vision, mission, value statement for your family. And so just go to createafamilyvision.com, createafamilyvision.com. And uh, we've got an online course there. You can check it out before you do anything and see if it's something that would be a fit. Um, but it's a very cool course. A bunch of families have gone through it. In fact, we asked that they send us selfies <laughs> as, as they're doing this. And it's been really neat to see these family selfies come in um, awesome. when, when they're creating. And so it's a generational change. You, again, will necessarily change the generational trajectory of your family if you do something like that. So yeah, those are the two places. Cool. Well, this has been awesome for me, Scott. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate your time sharing your knowledge and wisdom um, with all the listeners of Transformative Principle. It's been awesome, Jethro. Been awesome. Thanks for having me. That was a great interview with Scott Beebe. I hope you enjoyed it. That idea to block out time and ask what we will look like in three to five years. I did that recently and it was a powerful exercise and I hope that you can do it. I'd like you to take a minute and share this podcast with your friends and other principals and help them know how much you're learning from doing this. Also, if you would be willing to leave a review in iTunes, that would be great to help more people get to hear this great content. Transformative Principles is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators by educators. Visit edupodcastnetwork.com for more great podcasts.